So what I'm going to do now is literally a lot of math, really. And I'm just going to take this stiffness matrix and this mass matrix here and substitute it straight up into my determinant here and, and solve for these characteristic values or these lambdas and get the natural frequencies that I need. So here I am just going to set up my determinant problem. And this will be the determinant of this k minus lambda n m which is 1200 kip minus two times lambda n minus 600 kip inch minus 600 kip per inch. So I'm gonna just take the determinant of this two by two matrix. Hopefully you can see that this is with K min minus lambda n times m already done. And I am just gonna take the determinant of this. And so, you know, you might recall determinant of a matrix, A, B, C, D, the determinant of a two by two is just if you cross multiply, it's A, D minus B, C. And so we're just gonna go ahead and do that. And this is gonna look like this. Notice that all the kip inches, we could actually factor out a kip inch and those, those units actually cancel out. So that's nice, right? It's always nice when the units work out. So here's the, the determinant worked out. And now I'm just gonna do a bunch of algebra and just and set up my, uh, my quadratic equation. All right, so I've just set it up as a quadratic equation. And now I could use my quadratic formula. You could use your fancy schmancy calculator, Wolfram Alpha, whatever you want to do to determine the roots of this quadratic equation. And so here, I'm just going to work that out now. And I get two roots to this quadratic equation. I'm going to get 114.59. And the units of this is 1 over second squared and 785.41, one over second squared. And, and here, what you just have to remember was that lambda n was equal to omega n squared. Our omega n values are just the square root of each of these numbers, and that would just be 10.70 units of radians per second and 28.02 radians per second. What's typically done is that what you want to do is order these natural frequencies or these characteristics or these eigenvalues from smallest to largest. And the lowest natural frequency also represents what's called the fundamental frequency of our structural system. And so these are my, my eigenvalues. These are the natural frequencies for the two modes that I'm looking at. And next, what I'm going to do is just go back and utilize this relationship here to determine my eigenvectors, which are these mode shapes, these right here, this phi n. So to solve for the eigenvectors or the mode shapes of this, of this structure, I'm literally going to take the eigenvalues that I have here one by one, I'm gonna take like one, right now I'm gonna take 114.59, this first eigenvalue, substitute it into here. I have K, I have M, and then I'm just gonna solve for phi N, which is a vector with two, two values in it. So it's gonna look like this. So this is my K minus lambda M matrix, if you will. And then my eigenvector or my mode shape is gonna be phi for location one, mode one, location two, mode one. And this is gonna be equal to zero and zero. And so when I just you know work this out or I expand this, right here. And you can see that I have two dependent equations. So I just need to use one and I have to set a value to one of the, the eigenvector values, if you will. You know, common thing to do is to set the displacement or the mode shape modal displacement right here to a value of one. And so if E2 story or location two mode one is equal to one. And if I plug into any of these, right here. So for instance, if I plug in here, phi two one equals one right here, I'm gonna be able to solve for phi one one, and this is just gonna be 370.82 over 600 times one, which is equal to 0 0.618. And the negatives just from algebra, you know, if I take this to the other side, it becomes positive, that's no big deal. All right, and so this is my first uh, mode shape, if you will. So here, phi one would be equal to, let's see, on the first floor, phi one one is 0 0.618, and on the top floor is equal to one. Yay. Now I can re I'm gonna repeat the process for the second eigenvalue, the 785.41 to get my second eigenvector. So here, lambda two, and here I would have 
let's say location one, mode two, location two, mode two, equal to zero. And again, when I bust out the algebra for this, and again, if I say the second story, the top floor, the second mass, the second degree of freedom is equal to one, then I know that phi one two, just from using either of these two equations, phi one two, negative 1.61. And so this would be mode two and done. These are my eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So something that's useful to do is to take these mode shapes and draw what these mode shape deflections look like on our structural system. So I'll put the original structure here in gray. And these are my, just as a reminder, here are the two mode shapes. So here, this will be mode one. So I'll just write omega one equal to 10.7 radians per second. And in this mode shape, my first floor had 0.618 displacement. There's no units to it. And one had a unit displacement. And so I would, let's see, I'm gonna provide a unit displacement. What I will have is that my deflected shape would look like this and this. And that would be what my first mode of vibration looks like. For my second mode, I would have here, and this would be my unit displacement. And over here, on this opposite side, this would be this negative 1.6. One. And when I draw this, it's going to look pretty crazy, but here. All right. So these are my, my mode shapes and my, my natural frequencies for this two degree of freedom system. Hopefully this video was useful. What would be next is how do, do I take these actual mode shapes and use them to determine the displacement response of each degree of freedom, the free vibration response of each degree of freedom given some initial conditions, like initial displacement at each floor and an initial velocity at each floor. But take it easy. Hope you enjoyed it. Structure.